there is a way that they can identify with body memory and say, oh yeah, I know what that is. So if you've ever ridden a bike and then didn't ride for a while and you get on and it's like you, it feels like you were riding yesterday, that's body memory at play. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. My name's Rick Nusky. I hope you're doing really, really well today and thank you very much for joining us. Now, if this is your first time, I know that you're in for a treat today because I'm on the line with a wonderful Kat Son. Welcome to the show, Kat. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Yes, absolutely. A, a, a pleasure to have you here. Now, we have a lot to talk about today, um, especially given the fact that uh, you're the CEO at uh, Body Memory Process LLC. We're going to be talking about the actual body memory process. Fascinating. And how our early childhood vows impact our beliefs and ultimately how we live our lives. But before we do any of that, Kat, it is customary for us to learn a little bit about you. So where's home for you? I've been Northern Alabama. Is that been home forever? Is that, you know, where you grew up? No, no, <laughs> no. I'm, I'm actually from uh, the Northeast. Uh, I grew up in the Rhode Island, Connecticut area. And, uh, uh, then, you know, my, my work, uh, started drawing me down, you know, other areas of the country. So first, um, uh, I was, I was spent some time in the army. Mm -hmm. So that was my first time away from home. Uh, that had me travel all over, um, and then I ended up in the Maryland area, and then I did some traveling for work, and so yeah. I've had quite a bit of uh, of moving around. Yeah. So, but I like to say I'm here now. I'm settled in. I don't have any intention to go anywhere, anywhere, anytime soon. Yes, you've certainly done a bit of travel. I'd love to talk about your time in the army and all the other wonderful things you've done at some length. Now, it's quite relevant to also talk about your childhood um, when you're growing up, given the fact that there's a lot to do with um, what you refer to as childhood vows, which we'll talk about in a minute. But what do you remember about your childhood? I remember spending a lot of time uh, alone, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, I had two two brothers. Um, I, uh, and interestingly, I didn't actually realize I was adopted until I was in my thirties, which oh, is a wow. whole different story. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, but, uh, all, all three of us were adopted. My brothers were uh, enough older than I, that, um, I didn't really want to play with them. So <laughs> I spent time, um, you know, sort of playing with my toys. And then when I got old enough, uh, I like to just go out and explore. Yeah. Um, my, my mom let me just sort of, you know, she felt, I guess, <laughs> basically at that time, it was safe enough for me yep. to explore the trails behind the house that I, I loved uh, being out there. And I think that's when I first started to be very introspective. Mm -hmm. um, I started mm -hmm. to learn about myself. Uh, I started to write uh, rather deep poetry, I think, for, for that age. Um, and I found that my time um, walking through the woods was very special. Yeah, they're formative years, aren't they? And you talk about your, your mother yes. and, um, you know, um, I also think a lot about who else might have been around you in your earlier years that may have um, helped you uh, become the, the person that you are today. Do you have any people that you recall? Yes, I, I certainly my dad instilled a very um, strong work ethic. Uh, so, mm -hmm. and he had a great sense of humor, um, just very steady and a uh, very loving person, both my parents um, were. So it was really mostly my parents and then probably my, my teachers. Um, I was actually went to uh, 12 years of Catholic school. Mm -hmm. So I had the influence of, of nuns and priests who were my teachers, um, again, encouraging me uh, to think. I like to, to share my thoughts on, on things that I was studying and they really encouraged me uh, to formulate my own ideas about things. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you very much for the feedback. It's give, it gives great uh, level of context to the call because I think it's important that, you know, people understand the people behind the businesses because fundamentally the businesses uh, don't change all that much, do they? Yeah, no, that's true. Now, I'm, I'm wondering, what do you do in your, your downtime? Do you have much of it and what do you like to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I don't I don't really have a whole lot. Uh, I have two children, mm -hmm. um, so uh, I'm uh, sad to report they lost their dad um, two years ago. So mm -hmm. um, I'll I'll talk about my late husband in a couple of minutes yes, because he was uh, he was the one who started all of this work. You're very amazing. Um, yes, I've read uh, a bit about him. Yes. Um, so uh, I, I spend my time during the day working the business and then when the children are home from school. So I have an eight year old daughter mm -hmm. and a 12 year old son who is on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. And he's come a long way. He didn't talk since he, uh, he when he was going on six was when he really first started talking. And then, of course, there was a process for him to, to come out of himself. He's come a long ways. He's now reading um, and he's making friends, um, but there's there's still you know a lot more work, to be, work to be done. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'd like to be available to them when they're home from school and pretty much spend the rest of the day uh, being with them, activities with them. Um, do and, they do uh, they like pets? Yeah, just do relax. You, do you have pets? Yes, we have two cats. Very nice. Uh, by, We'd like to have a dog, but my, my son isn't too sure about that. Oh, he's, of course. He's a little afraid of him. I think that if he sort of grew up with a puppy, he'd be okay, but we haven't <laughs> taken that chance yet. Yeah, <laughs> Let's see how that goes. Now, uh, uh, we're not sure how the cats will feel about the dog either. So. <laughs> um, I, we always have to give the pets a name. So what are their names? Callie and Lexi. So it's <laughs> Calypso and Alexandria. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'd love to talk a little bit about your time in the U.S. Army because I, I, I strongly believe that the things that we're exposed to, be it sports, our professional background, really do shape the individuals that we've uh, become. You know, and I think about discipline when I think about the U.S. Army. What, what would you say to your time in the Army? You really hit the nail on the head. So the reason I went into the Army mm -hmm. uh, was really the... Uh, I think the influence of, of my dad. Uh, I was originally going to go into the Navy. Uh, when I uh, took the, the testing, um, they, you know, I qualified for the, the type of um, uh, intelligence work, so battlefield intelligence support. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, again, I, I wanted to be in the Navy because my dad worked with a lecture boat um, building the uh, nuclear submarines up there in Connecticut. And uh, I, I thought I wanted to go Navy, but at the last minute, it seemed, uh, they said that there was a loan forgiveness program that only the Army had. So it just, it just switched over to, <laughs> to, uh, to the Army. But as far as the impact that it had on me was exactly what I really needed was a kick in the butt uh, because I was very distracted in college. Uh, when I started out in pre-med, uh, but I had been trained in voice and in piano mm -hmm. since I was a teenager. And I thought I really wanted to, to go into to music. Uh, and so I spent more time in the fine arts building than I did in the, <laughs> in the library, <laughs> perhaps uh, doing the studying I needed to. So things were just, I was con confused, I think, as to really what I wanted to do. And it wasn't until I was in uh, the Army, I really started to gain that self-confidence I needed. I, I started you know, uh, gaining awards mm -hmm. and I was at the top of my class and this and that and um, things really turned around. For yeah, me I, I mean, I, I take a, a lot of time talking about this with people because anybody who's served understands um, the amount of work and, and the amount of growth that you go through as well. Now, given that you're a parent and you're also a business owner, your days must start early. I'd love to talk a little bit about what a typical day would look like for you. Do you get up early? I do. Uh, so I, I'm actually retired from the federal government. So mm -hmm. I spent 36 years uh, with the federal government. Yep. And, uh, you know, most of my um, colleagues who are retired get up a lot later than I do. <laughs> so having children in school, I get up about six o'clock yes. uh, to make sure that I have things going, you know, breakfast and lunches and, and that I get them uh you know, going and dressed and everything they need to do <laughs> yeah. to get out the door. Yeah. Uh, so that's how the day starts. Um, I, I consider, um, you know, my health, so it's just me now. So mm -hmm. I consider, um, you know, my health to be uh, very, very important uh, to the future of my children. Yeah. Um, and so uh, three times a week, I do go to the local fitness boutique and I I work out um, with bar and yoga and Pilates and uh, Piloxing and all of those um, and types active of things. Lifestyle. I, 
I, I feel like I, I will share with everyone, I am 60 years old mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life uh, because I really, you know, so I buckled down, lost some weight I wanted to lose. Mm -hmm. And then uh, for the past year, I've really been getting myself uh, really, really into shape so I can <laughs> have that long day Continue that I have. Live. Yeah. Um, yes. So when I'm done with the workout and the shopping or anything else that I need to do um, out, uh, then I have the, the core hours where I'm, I'm working on the business. Um, I, I, this might be a good part uh, point to um, to talk about my late husband, David. Yes, so, let's do that. Um, so he was the one who created body memory process. And the way that he would work the business um, is he would have someone who would organize his work in a, in a city somewhere in the country. He would travel out there. He would speak to usually a rather large group of people. It was a, you know, a free, you know, introduction uh -huh. um, like we have mm -hmm. now while we have web and free webinars come, you know, listen. And uh, he would talk to them. And uh, when he was done, uh, they would have the opportunity to sign up. Uh, to work with him, he would stay in that city for two, three weeks, um, you know, longer if needed uh, to work with those people. And he would work uh, two and a half to three hour sessions and he would just line them up back to back. back he would back. work very long days. Uh, but that was the way, you know, he, it was him, you know, he had a, a few apprentices, but it was really him doing this work one on one uh, with people. And I don't have the luxury of uh, being able to just, you know, pick up and go travel to a city and, mm -hmm. and you know, because I have all these wonderful children. So I've been, most of my work has been to scale this, uh, to be able to present it in the way that people can do this work themselves. Um, there's nothing like being in the room with David So. Um, he was very intuitive. He could, he was like, a, people described him as like a laser beam. Um, as opposed to like traditional, you know, psychotherapy and work that is more like a flashlight. You know, he was, he could just get right at the issue rather quickly mm -hmm. because he would do what he called listen people. He wouldn't listen to them. He would listen them. Very different. And when you're listening to someone, you kind of pull your own energy in and probably like, probably like you do. I mean, the, like the focus is on you. I'm really here to hear you talk. And he would um, he said that if you really listen to someone and give them the opportunity to talk, they will tell you their birth, they will, they'll tell you their uh, life script. Mm. Um, a lot of it is also birth script, which we can talk about in a little bit. Absolutely. Um, but the, the decisions they made can be reflected in just the way they talk about themselves and how they interact in life. He sounds like an incredible man who's done some wonderful things. Yes. Yes, and you've, yes, absolutely. You've, you've carried on his work. And what, what made you decide that this was going to be your path? Well, for about 25 years um, that uh, I was married to David before he passed, mm -hmm. I learned so much about the work. Um, uh, he was, uh, when I first met him, he was starting to write his book. And he had these big, long uh, files, you know, I mean, just... 60 pages, <laughs> uh, you know, and, he, and I caught him at one point trying to kind of pull it all apart. And I said, don't worry about that. I'll do that. I'm, I'm good mm. at that. So just get it all down. Doesn't matter. Stream of consciousness, get it all <laughs> I'll down. Take it. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, so, so essentially that's what I did was um, edit and kind of assemble and reassemble. And he would say, yeah, I'd write all day. He would talk to people. I'd write all day. I'd, a cat would come home from work and all of a sudden I'd end up with all this red ink all over. <laughs> <laughs> you've destroyed my work what well, are you doing <laughs> yeah but uh it was all good um it, it all you know came together at one point and and we ended up with uh, the paperback version of the book called escaping the labyrinth um which we then uh later published again as your childhood vows and now kindle edition Yes, fantastic news. Now, I know that you've also uh, written some, some work and put it into the book format. We'll talk about that in, in a little while, but I really want to start digging in if we can, Kat. Uh, what is the, the process? What is the body memory process all about? So I think before we get to the process, which is actually the way to deal with body memory, right. I'd like to talk a little bit about body memory. 
And that's a really good place to really connect with people because if they've never heard of this before, there, uh, there is a way that they can identify with body memory and say, oh, yeah, I know what that is. So if you've ever, you know, you've ridden a bike and then didn't, didn't ride for a while and you get on and it's like you, it feels like you were riding yesterday, mm -hmm. that's body memory at play. If you uh, have a car where your gear shift is in one place and you go and rent a car and it's in the gear shift is in another and you end up pawing at the air <laughs> for, for the gear shift, um, that's because that's muscle memory or body memory. It's mm -hmm. those terms are used interchangeably. Um, and um, so body memory is also used, adults will use it in things like uh, playing music. So if you're a, a, a pianist and you want to, you know, you're learning, you're sort of memorizing the music, but your fingers are memorizing the music. You don't have to think about each individual note. That's that's body memory. Dancing, uh, when do there's a choreograph uh, choreograph dance, mm -hmm. um, or even sports, uh, and so body memory is a part of who we are as humans. It helps us to function in the world. Um, driving a car, all of these things that we don't want to have to think about the each individual step, or we wouldn't, we probably wouldn't be as advanced as we are. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it really does help us. Now, where it becomes a hindrance is when it is used um, in this certain way of which the body memory process addresses. When um, we're very young, we are trying to figure out how to get attention and to be loved. Uh, we may, you may not really realize that, but that's actually uh, what children are, are very much involved in. And they've mm. done a lot of research and have found that children actually have a lot of sophisticated thought processes. They just don't, they're, they can't verbalize it. Yeah. So a lot of these um, decisions that children make um, are pre-logical and pre-verbal. Uh, but we, we need to remember that the the body is an energy system, and that is a that is a big part of one of the fun, fundamental uh, things that David had studied. Uh, he had traveled to the Far East. I mean, he he did mm -hmm. a lot of work mm -hmm. for about fifteen or twenty years before this really came together for him. Yeah. And a big part of it was the body as an energy system. So, if anyone who's familiar with the work of Deepak Chopra, you know, Ayurveda, a lot mm -hmm. of those, the Eastern ways of um, addressing medicine and the human body, that's all a, a part of this. And I can talk about that a little bit more later when I talk about the body map that David discovered and um, put together for use. Um, so another thing I want to mention at this point is two kinds of memory. So there's explicit memory, which we think about as, okay, I remember what I had for dinner last night, or I remember certain events, and I remember all the details, and that's governed largely by the hippocampus. But when we talk about this type of memory, it is implicit, and it's the amygdala, believe it or not, that's at play. That's our oh. fight or flight, flight. Yes. mechanism. And so I'll give you an example of this at work. If uh, someone's in a car accident and just before the crash, there was the squealing of brakes and, the, you know, the tires making mm -hmm. noises and, you know, maybe they smelled rubber. There was all of these sensory, sensory. things, yeah. uh, yes, information. And, uh, you know, then they had their uh, recovery and perhaps, you know, years later, they're in a situation where maybe they hear it happen nearby and all of a sudden they are right back in that moment again. Um, that is uh, implicit memory. It's very much involved in trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody mm -hmm. who is going through PTSD, so soldiers that are going through post-traumatic uh, stress disorder mm -hmm. are, are experiencing this. Now, trauma uh, is very important to you know what we're talking about here. So David um, outlines in his book, uh, in all the materials that we have, mm -hmm. we talk about the different types of vows or decisions that are that come from different types of trauma that occurs to the very early being. Now, sometimes it's hard for people to wrap their heads around this, mm. but there can actually be trauma associated 
as early as conception. Oh, wow. Now, this is when mom finds out she's pregnant. Now, when you think about it, either mom's really happy that she's pregnant or she's, she's not. not happy. Yeah. It, there's not really any gray area. No, there's not. Oh, uh, I'm wait, sort of happy. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't think too many people are kind of nonchalant about yeah, it. No. Like, oh, I really want this, then I'm ready or what? No. Um, so uh, whether mom, um, you know, was happy about it or not, there's there's still that energy. It, it, it's certainly not about language. Um, yeah. It's not about you know at that point, but that starts because the because of the um, the developing uh, being uh, essentially that's. That becomes a part of it. Uh, there are um, conception vows. You know, I am an accident, and I'm telling you, like, say, sometimes people go, "Yeah, right." I don't, I don't, I'm not sure I get that. But David worked with hundreds, uh, probably more like in the four digits. I'm not sure we didn't never counted them all up, but he worked for many, many, many clients for yeah. many years. Yeah. And there, it's uncanny. How many people were, did you know, you know, my parents weren't really planning me. And yes, I'm accident prone. Yes. And the there's correlation. the vowel in there. Yes, there's the vowel in there. You know, I am an accident. Now, there's uh, another, uh, a few more vows that are associated with um, what be more like, um, well, it could be at birth, but now we find out a lot earlier um, the gender of the child. A lot of people are finding out about 20 weeks, and mm -hmm. um, there's still going to be an, a reaction when we find out whether it's a boy or a girl, whether it's at birth or, you know, when, yep. while we're still in the womb. Yep. And there can be a, a disappointment. Now, I know, you know, ultimately, you know, it's like, I don't care it's, as long as the baby's healthy, and I think everyone gets to that place. But again, there's still... You know, we're talking about the baby being very connected with mom. Um, and again, there's lots of research on this about hearing her voice, understanding your voice. But there's also any type of adrenaline, any type, whatever biochemical things going on in her body. The transference. The, the baby can experience it. And so vows can come out of that. Uh, I am a mistake. You know, I am a surprise. Um, I'm not wanted. And a lot of the, um, you know, I, I should have been a boy or, you know, I will be a boy because I want to be able to please mom. Mm -hmm. So I'll be a boy. But, of course, I'm not a boy. I'm a girl. But then I end up in the world with um, issues related to that. There mm -hmm. are uh, clients that David worked with who ended up having, um, you know, female issues health-wise. Yep. Um, and, and just any number of things that, that – can come from a vow such as such as that. So the vows can come from what's going on with the early developing being anywhere from conception through time in the womb, mm -hmm. at birth, and then in early childhood. Now, there's a lot of literature on birth trauma out there. Um, uh, you know, Le Boyer, there's a, 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 a few um, authors who, um, you know, the mind of your unborn baby. There's a lot of books out there uh, that talk about um, birth trauma because the, uh, well, aside from any of the complications that can happen, mm -hmm. you know, the baby is emerging from this perfect environment into what's often a, a rather harsh environment with the bright lights and the, um, you know, certainly going to be colder. Mm -hmm. uh, and And so there's, um, there's things that can be said uh, by the birth team um, that will be <laughs> that will be picked up. Implanted there, there into some, their memory. Yes, um, there are some things that are not very kind that can be said at that time, and mm. they they have emerged through David's work with people. Wow, um, it's there's quite a, amazing. <laughs> it's such a deep topic. I, I know that this is something we could spend many many hours on. Now I'm wondering if we could maybe uh, direct the, the, the discussion to, uh, I guess, somewhat um, of the unlearning process. Is there an unlearning of, I guess, negative memory imprints, for lack of better ways uh, to put it? So that's where the process comes in, for the body memory process. All right. There is, uh, so, so there is a, 
if a if a client someone wants to come and uh, if they want to work with David now if they want to work with me yeah, and yeah. I have an arrangement um, I have a multimedia course um, and uh, so again be to be able to offer this as broadly as possible and that I can engage with people through technology mm -hmm. um, I I have it, uh, an offer where you can talk to me first yep. uh, and then work the course um, and see if you can get through the, at least through the discovery session I have a almost hour-long video that talks you well you know, it just walks you through the whole everything through the discovery part um, and then you can re-engage with me and we can talk about the list of vows that you discovered um, and then I'll talk to you about what the homework process is now the homework is 90 days mm -hmm. and that's because of re needing to retrain the new cells so you, you think about body memory and the memories being in uh, being stored in the, the long muscles of the body mm -hmm. um, the, the because the body renews the cells renew themselves you have we have the opportunity to to sort of recreate ourselves we can uh, this about so there's a three-pronged process that David created called um, essentially emptying the cup you know the old story of master teach me everything you know the tea he's pouring tea mm -hmm. and the tea keeps he keeps pouring and the cup overflows and he says I, I but master my cup is already full well so is your mind I can't teach you anything uh. Uh, and the, so it's the same way um, uh, the um, let's see it was um, Rudolf Steiner who said that by the time we're about five years old we've largely decided how I am they are and life is there's not really much anything else right um, and so if we've already got all those decisions where, that we've we've thought we, we think we figured out the world when we're that young mm -hmm. then we need to be able to empty that cup so that as adults we can live consciously you know so that we can make choices in the moment without all of that baggage sort of influencing our, yes. our, our choices yeah. and so the body memory process is about emptying the physical cup emptying the mental cup emptying the spiritual cup the physical cup is emptied through disavowals so I have a I have discovered a vow I'll talk about me. I've always called myself David's poster child for this work. <laughs> <laughs> so I was born extremely premature. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, I, I didn't realize until I was an adult and I was so nervous being in front of, of groups. Yeah, I could not talk in front of anyone without getting just like almost fainting. I was so nervous. Mm -hmm. And I worked, uh, worked David. And we discovered that uh, because I was in an incubator in 1961, uh, mm -hmm. nobody really expected me to live. Um, I was uh, born at um, six months gestation, very wow. violently. Um, and I, um, you know, I ended up with pe people, you know, looking at me all the time through the incubator. And I realized that, again, this is through energy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I picked up on what a lot of them were thinking, and that was that I wasn't going to make it. And I had the vow, they watch me to see when I'm going to die. Goodness now, me. just think about that when I'm, you know, standing in front of a group as an adult, and I don't know why I have all of this, you know, just with all this energy focused on me, why I have this type of a reaction. That connection, But, yeah. you, know, you know, there it is. So I emptied the physical cup. I disavow, they watch me to see when I am going to die. And I did that for 90 days. I uh, did the forgiveness work, that's the spiritual cup. So there's a forgiveness process mm -hmm. as well for whoever may be involved. Uh, so, you know, the, the NICU team, um, <laughs> you know, whoever may be involved in whatever scenario that was this uh, decision was made around. And then there is an emptying the mental cup process uh, this, I think it's really brilliant that David uh, discovered, you know, we've heard about affirmations, so we want to be able to declare, you know, I'm a powerful woman. Well, I can say that all day long, but if my brain chatter is, uh, no, you're not, <laughs> because of this and this and this and this and this and all of these things, then, you know, that's, that's going to be counterproductive. Yeah. And so there is a process for just get it all down, you know, just write down the affirmation on the left side of the notebook, 
what does your brain say on the right and sort of like get it all out get it all you know, out Get it, get it all out, and then there may be any number of other things that you could discover in that process and, and work on that too. Um, but that is the, um, that's, there is the good news. Uh, we always say the good news is you, you uh, the bad news is you made it all up. The good news is you made it all up because <laughs> we can actually, uh, we can let that go. We can, we can discover it, release it, and, and create what we want. Uh, there's one more thing I want to make sure I don't forget to put in here Absolutely. because it is so important. There's another dimension to all of this, and that is about prevention. So being a conscious parent, um, there's a, a lot of work that can be done educating uh, pregnant moms. Uh, what's really going on? I just you know, your baby's conscious, you know, what, what you, what you're feeling now, we can't police our thoughts every, you know, it's just, it's you know, that's not so easy to do. But I had a teacher once who said, it's not the birds that fly over your head that you need to worry about. It's the ones who make a nest in your hair. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This has just been such one of those conversations. And I think to myself, yeah. you know, we've just scratched the surface, haven't we, Kat? Really? Yes. Um, and I'd like to tell you a quick story. Um, and this is how powerful this stuff is. So in uh, interaction with my daughter just about a week ago, uh, I've been educating her palate. So a lot of she, ever since she was very young, her, um, her dad and I were just introduced her to a lot of flavor. And um, she's come to be very kind of just picky. Uh, sometimes she seems to be picky, but really she's discerning. And yes. <laughs> it shows up as, but I don't like that. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to waste that now because it's not something that I would eat. Or in this particular instance, it was something a little too sugary for me. And so I ended up saying, you must think I'm made out of money and slammed the container in the garbage. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I was sort of pulled into that wonderful observer place where it's good to be in mm -hmm. life so that we could just see ourselves. <laughs> and that's that, that's that go up to the mountaintop, oh, right? Yes, Step back. Down. <laughs> see yourself, see the interaction, and get clarity. And I realized that these are the moments that vows are created. Yes. That's, that's, like, that's, that could have been a very traumatic moment. My daughter could have decided something like, okay, so I just won't share my opinion with mom anymore, right? Mom gets upset. Well, that's then down the road, she's a teenager, and when I really would, you know, she, it's really good. For her to be in communication with me maybe mm -hmm. maybe there's a there's some damage to that relationship mm -hmm. or perhaps even worse she gets to be an adult and if she says well money is more important than my opinion she could end up in a job that pays well but maybe she has an abusive boss yeah. or maybe she doesn't feel like her talents are, are being used to the to the extent that they could be but she might choose to just stay in that job because, well, it pays well, pays well. And she may not be conscious, not remember at all where that decision came up. But for that interaction that she had with mom when she was eight years old, that's when it could happen. Do you know what? This, is, this comes back to that um, discussion we had about your childhood growing up in those formative years. Now, I want to um, uh, shift gears now because already at the pointy end of the call. It's amazing how time flies when we're having such a great conversation and it's been a real privilege for, for the My Future Business audience to listen in on this. Now, um, what is the process and where are people going to actually go when they want to start connecting with you? Yes, so my website is bodymemoryprocess.com. Uh, there's no www, even no. though if you put it in, it, it, will, it will still go there. Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot of information on the website. Um, I, and there's also a link there to a practitioner network that I'm in called heal.me. So it's H-E-A-L dot M-E mm -hmm. slash B-M-P, which stands for Body Memory Process. And that's where my course is available, um, the, the, um, which, of course, includes the body map, which I didn't go into any detail about. I, I just like to say that the body map is interactive. Um, it's something that I would like to turn into an app 
one yes, day. That's, wow. that's that's a dream dream of mine. Yes. Um, because there's so much that David discovered that there's a lot of um, AI could really help this uh, out a lot, mm -hmm. and people might not be able to come up with oh here's definitively you know your set of vows, but it could certainly crunch through a lot of that information and be able to get them a lot closer to trying to figure out you know just what's going on that's running them. Um, and build so a picture. the body map, yes, um, so the body map right now is interactive and it it's it's well explained. There are um, over 900 vows that have been discovered over the past uh, 30 years of, of working with clients. Just, you know, in there, coded according to where they show up. Um, David had um, uh, identified the, the map of the body, right side, left side, front and back. It all means something. Mm -hmm. And where, um, where the tension is showing up in relationship to... Of the chakra, the energy system of uh, each involved. of the chakras in the in the body. Mm -hmm. Wow! If you're on this so, call today and you're listening into this and and, and what Kat has to share, um, again, we've just touched the surface of this wonderful topic that uh, has the potential uh, to change lives. And if you want to learn more, I'm going to be making sure to put the link uh, bodymemoryprocess.com below this post so no matter where you hear this interview you are most certainly going to be able to connect with Kat and with all that being said Kat thank you so very much for spending some time with me on the My Future Business Show today. Thank you it's been an honor to be here. Thanks for joining us today if you enjoyed the call then make sure to subscribe leave a comment share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.